What's up, Future Officers? My name is Tejas and I welcome you all very warmly to yet another episode of iLead. The year was 1888. Alfred Nobel picks up the newspaper. The headline blares, the merchant of death is now dead. As he goes on to read the article, he understands that it is his brother, Alfred Nobel's brother, who was actually dead. But the world had mistook that Alfred Nobel was the person who died. And he was very infamously called as the person who invented the dynamite. Alfred Nobel started wondering, is this what I'll be remembered for? Is this what I spent my whole life to achieve? Can there be something else which my name will be remembered this for? And from the inception of this thought was born this particular idea. He writes in his will that my wealth shall be a price for those who contribute to the mankind. And when I say mankind, it was mainly the fields relating to physics, chemistry, medicine, literature and peace. So, if you see his family initially start opposing Alfred Nobel. They are like, how can you give away all your wealth? It belongs to all of us. But Alfred Nobel was very clear. If at all anybody, the people have to remember him, then they have to remember him in a good way. In 1901, the first prizes were awarded. From celebrating Einstein to championing peace, the prize became a chronicle of human genius, a legacy of destruction rewritten into a perpetual award of great achievements. Today, when we discuss about Nobel Prizes, the Nobel Prizes are the most prestigious prizes in the whole of the world. If we see, the Nobel Prize is given for six subjects. Initially, it was given for five subjects. Later, another one subject was added to this. So the five subjects are mainly physics, chemistry, medicine or physiology. Then fourth one is literature and the fifth one is peace. So along with these five, you have another award, which is the sixth award for economics. So that's a Nobel Prize for economics, which was not started along with these five. These five were started in 1901. But this economics one was started in 1968. And the prizes started to be awarded from 1969. Now, the people who received this Nobel Prizes were called as laureates. Why is this word laureate, sir, you might ask? See, laureate is mainly the term laureate comes because they get a wreath which is made from the laurel tree. And laurel tree had a lot of significance in the Greek and the Roman cultures. So basically, Europeans, they had a lot of reverence to this laurel tree. Hence, the Nobel Prize winners also get a breath made of laurel tree, hence they are called as laureates. So, from 1901, okay, this award, which is based on Alfred Nobel's name itself, this award has continuously been there till the year 2025. Continuously it was there, except on two occasions. During World War I and during World War II, you can see a certain pause in these awards. Usually and always, Nobel Prizes are given on December 10th of every year. Sir, why December 10th specifically, you might ask. See, December 10th was the year in which Alfred Nobel died. So, that is the day usually in which the prizes are given. So, there's a certain rule which you have to know about the Nobel Prizes. Usually, there's a rule which you have to know about this Nobel Prizes. The first thing is that this Nobel Prize could be given to one person or it could be shared between two people or it could even be shared between three people. So this one prize is given on a shareable basis. Now, what we have to remember and this is a very important point is that the Nobel Prizes are always given to an individual only. It is not given to an organization. That is, you see Nobel Prize on physics, chemistry, medicine, literature, okay, economics, all of them are given to individuals. Either one individual, two individual or three individual. It is shared. But except one particular prize, which is the Nobel Peace Prize. Now, this Nobel Peace Prize is the only prize which can be given to an individual also and an organization also. Okay, sir, all of this is fine. But, sir, is self-nomination allowed? For example, can I, for my discovery or for my contribution, can I nominate myself for Nobel Prize? No, I cannot nominate myself for the Nobel Prize. Sir, I have another doubt here. What if the person is a dead person? Can this award be given posthumously? This can also be a question. See, when it comes to the Nobel Prizes, they are not given after a person dies, no matter how great their contribution is. It is always and usually given to a live person. So, it is usually given to their achievements in the preceding year itself. So, it's the universities, etc. who recommend and who makes this nomination that they have done some significant work in this particular regard. 
Okay, so usually the prices are selected on this. Now you might get a very intelligent question here. Sir, what if during the time of announcement of the Nobel Prize, that person is alive? But right before that prize ceremony, that is December 10th, during that time something happens and they happen to die. That time will the prize be given? I would say that yes, that time they are eligible to get the prize because they were alive during the announcement of the prize. Now the first Indian to ever get this award was Rabindranath Tagore for his contribution in literature. When we see about who got the first Nobel Peace Prize, then that would be Mother Teresa. So these are certain trivia which we have to remember. Now another one thing which is very special is, see even though there is this Nobel Committee, it is not one organization which is responsible for giving all the prizes. There are different organizations which give different Nobel Prizes for different subjects. Like for example, the first one, the Royal Swedish Academy for Sciences. Now they give the prizes with respect to physics, chemistry and economics. The second is this Swedish Academy for Literature. And the third one, the Norwegian Nobel Committee. They are responsible for giving the Nobel Peace Prize. Another thing which we have to make note here, which is very, very important, is that the Nobel Prize for Physics, Chemistry, Medicine and Economics and Literature, all of them is announced in this place called as Sweden. Okay. But only one thing, which is the Nobel Peace Prize, is announced in not Sweden, but it is announced in Norway, which is a neighboring country. So Norway in Oslo. So this Norwegian committee takes a lot of pride and they are very fiercely independent when it comes to selecting the candidate for the Nobel Peace Prize. And of course, you have the last academy, which is the Karolinska Institute of Nobel Assembly. Now, this Karolinska Institute of Nobel Assembly is responsible for giving the Nobel Literature Prize. Sir, this was enough and very wide coverage of Nobel Committee. But can you tell me a little bit about the award winners in the latest 2025? Yes, I'll tell you who are the people who won. In 2025, the Nobel Prize for Chemistry was shared between three people. The first one is Susuma Kitagawa from Japan. The second prize winner is Richard Robson from Australia. And the third winner here is Omar N. Yagi from USA. So these three people, they share the prize which they have got in chemistry. Sir, the sharing is fine. We understand that the prize can be shared. But what is that work which they have done? That can be a serious question here. Their discovery right now is called as the metal organic framework. So this metal organic framework, sir, what is this all about? Why is this so special that it's got a Nobel Prize on chemistry? You can ask this. So what exactly is this metal organic framework? See, very simple. Now imagine a molecular scale Lego toy. This particular Lego toy set where the hubs are like a metal atom let's say zinc or copper and these connecting rods between one another are the organic molecules basically like carbon based linkers. By combining these, the scientists can build a rigid, porous and incredibly spacious 3D material which has vast empty spaces and a huge internal surface area so large so that a single gram can fit almost the space of a football field. Think of these metal organic frameworks almost like super sponges perfect for capturing storing and releasing these molecules so where could the potential use be the potential use could be in storing clean hydrogen fuel capturing the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere or even so in delivering a drug into our body the second prize is the nobel prize for physics here again it is shared by three people the first uh, prize is for john clark the second one is for this person called as Michael H. DeVore. The third prize is for John M. Martinez. So all of the three of them, they invented something called as the inverted quantum mechanical tunneling. So what exactly is this inverted quantum tunneling you might ask? Okay, inverted quantum mechanical tunneling. See, think of it this way. Quantum means everything is happening at a small molecular level. Now here, tunneling is basically like this quantum cheat code. So what happens here is that normally, let's say a particle like an electron doesn't have the energy to climb up a wall. In regular tunneling, 
it cheats by magically appearing on the other side of the wall. Now, inverted tunneling is the opposite scenario. Here, the particle has more than enough energy to climb up the wall. But however, it goes inside a valley. So basically, if the valley means it's almost like an energy well. According to the classical rules, it should be easily able to escape. But in the quantum world, it gets a chance. There's a chance that it gets trapped and gets reflected back. Almost like it's hitting a ghost wall. So basically, while regular testing is failing the test but passing anyway, inverted tunneling is basically this concept of acing the test but then failing anyway. A strange quantum uh, rule that defies our everyday logic. Okay, so this is what they found. And because of this, they got this Nobel Prize for Physics. Next, we come to the third prize, which is the Nobel Prize for Physiology or Medicine. Here, we see that it is shared by, again, three people. Mary E. Brunkow. So, basically, she gets half of the prize money. And the other half is shared by the uh, other two remaining people. So, who are these other two remaining people? Fred Ramsdell. And the third one is Shimon Sakaguchi. So, Shimon Sakaguchi and Fred Ramsdell, they both share half and half of the price of the already half which was given. Okay, so half for the first person, remaining half for the other two people who would share it equally. So, this is the sharing here. Sir, this is fine. But what did these people invent that they got a Nobel Prize in Medicine? See, they invented something called as the peripheral immune tolerance. So, let me try explaining what this peripheral immune tolerance is. See, Think of your body, think of your body's immune system as a highly trained security force. Its job is to attack foreign invaders like bacteria and virus. Peripheral immune tolerance is like security protocols against foreign invaders like viruses and bacteria that teach this particular force not to open fire against its own civilians. Since in this case, the civilian population is our own uh, healthy cells and tissues. These protocols are very essential to prevent this friendly fire, which is what we call as autoimmune diseases. In short, it's the don't attack self immune system that works outside the main command center, thereby ensuring that your own immune system doesn't turn up against your own body. Next, we go to the fourth Nobel Prize, which is the Nobel Prize on Economics. Like I told you before, this was not there in the beginning itself. It was started in 1968. And it, the award started to be given in 1969. So basically, there are these three people in economics. The first one is called as Joel Mokher. The second Nobel awardee here is called as Philip Agion. And the third one is called as Peter Hobbit. So basically, what was this economics Nobel Prize all about? In simplified, I'm telling you in simple terms, it's basically where they discovered that wherever there is innovation, and entrepreneurship and both of them come together it creates a synergy wherein a lot of employment is generated so if a lot of employment is generated what does that inherently mean it inherently means that the per capita income would increase if the per capita income increases the purchasing power would increase if the purchasing power increases the growth would increase if the growth increases the gdp would increase and you see that the cycle goes on and on and on. The fifth Nobel Prize which we are talking about is the Nobel Prize for Literature in 2025. So this time the Nobel Prize for Literature is given to this person called as Lazio Krasna Horkoy. Okay, forgive me for my pronunciation. It's a little bit of tough name. Okay, so basically it's a Hungarian name. So this poet, this story writer, this uh, novelist, he is basically from Hungary. So one of very difficult books of his to read. So basically, he has one speciality. He goes on writing one sentence for almost 10, 11 pages. Okay, almost very difficult for an average minded person to understand all of that. Anyways, let's not get into what all he's written. Okay, but maybe we can note down a few of these works which he's written. One of his magnus opus is about Santan Tango. Okay, so this is one of his books. And the second one, which we could remember the name of this, is the Melanchony of Resistance. Of course, the last person here is the Nobel Peace Prize. So this time it was a lot in news because our very favorite person of all the newspaper journalists had gotten a nomination from our very friendly neighbor, Pakistan. So anyways, it's uh, obvious to say that he did not win the prize. 
Okay, but anyways, he was also a nomination and he was also a very strong contender for this prize. Anyways, the, the Nobel Peace Prize this time was won by this Venezuelan. Her name is Maria Cornico Machado. So, who is this Maria Corinco Machado, sir? You might ask. See, she was the leader of opposition. So, Venezuela, as you must all know, was suffering for hyperinflation for quite some time right now. So, there was an authoritarian regime, there was a dictatorship. But this leader of opposition fought tooth and nail to re-establish democracy there. And for this valiant efforts of hers, she was recognized and she was given this prize, Nobel Peace Prize of 2025. So with this, I think we've done a more than 360 degree coverage wherein we've discussed all the stories from where Alfred Nobel conceived this idea of Nobel Prize, all the trivia, the uh, prizes of whoever got in 2025, what all did they discover? So we've discussed even a little bit of that in detail. So I don't think anything more than this would be asked. And if at all, a few question which comes on awards, which crops up in our UPSC prelims every now and then, you will be more than exam ready to tackle this. I will leave you all here and I will conclude this session. The stage is signing off. I'll see you all in the next session. Thank you and bye-bye.